Metal Gear is a franchise that is near and dear to my heart and obviously many other people's hearts because it's like what? One of the most popular fucking games in the... It's one of the most popular franchises in the world, period. Um, it's not my absolute favorite franchise. It's like top five easily. It's like one of the top five, one of the only franchises I actually play. So, I mean, obviously I love the shit out of it. And I'm taking the time to make this list. I'm taking the time to talk about it. But I don't have a script. I don't fucking uh, do this very often. But I, I, I wanted to just have this as like a little fun change of pace compared to the regular streams. But, uh, alright, so I'm going to probably piss off a lot of people with my list. Just saying. Um, Nico even said up here, MGS2 hype. Uh, yeah, hell yeah. Uh, so much, so much hype for that fucking sick game, right? MGS4 is a movie. It is a, it's a damn good movie. It's a damn good movie. But you're right, it's a movie. Well, there's 11 games in the franchise. I'm going to include, um, even the two games that a lot of people like to leave off their fucking list for some stupid-ass reason. Metal Gear Rising and Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops. Because regardless of what fucking fans think, those fucking two games are canon. So I have to include those. And I'm going to. And you know what? I even enjoy those games. And you, I'm going to be honest with you. Every single fucking little game on this list is sick. It's just a matter of how sick. Um, and I'm going to say the Metal Gear franchise ranges from like a level of like just, you know, good, entertaining um, to... Pretty much legendary. Like, the quality of number one, two, and three games are, well, at least one and two on my list, are objectively the greatest games probably ever made up there. And like, Well, they're at least in the top ten regime of best games ever made. I'm not talking about genres. I'm not including, you know, like, uh, uh, um, it's, times they were released uh, or anything like that i'm talking about just games that have been released since the dawn of video game ages today till 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 today they are objectively some of the best games ever fucking made so that's pretty much the quality we're working with here good to like beyond incredible so you, you know like if even if i'm talking shit which i'm gonna be doing here because i love talking shit and I'm going to be saying some nasty shit about some of these early games in the list because we're going bottom to top. Um, I still have an affinity for all of these games. I still like at least all of these games. So I just want to get that out of the way just to, you know, before anybody gets pissed. Because I know this list is probably going to get me the most heat over any other ranking list I've ever done. I've done Siphon Filter, I've done Resident Evil, and I've done Hitman. And now I'm doing Metal Gear, and I think this one... It's probably going to be my most subjective and most uh, anger-inducing list um, out of the four so far. Probably even when I do Splinter Cell, I'm probably still going to have this as my most anger-inducing list. I got to be honest. This is probably going to be uh, it's going to piss off a lot of fans. A lot of fans. So number eleven. Here we go. So I have this at my my eleven. I, I'm going to put footage for all the other games from ten on up. But I don't have any footage for Metal Gear Rising because I've never played it on stream. Because I don't fucking care about this game. I think it's a fun game. I think it's a cool beat-em-up. But I don't like beat-em-ups. I like stealth action, espionage genre, like survival shit. I love that. This is not that. Metal Gear Rising may be a good game. But it's not a good Metal Gear game. It doesn't even resemble Metal Gear. It's completely, completely different from everything Metal Gear represents. And they did that on purpose. So I'm not going to say some shit about this game. I don't want to talk shit about it because I don't feel like I, it belongs in the shit-talking realm. It, it's definitely a, a decent game if you like beat-em-ups and hack and slashes and shit. This is the type of game people should play if they like fast-paced, you know, linear uh, style kind of shit with some Metal Gear elements in it. Uh, really intense fucking boss fights, heavy metal music playing all over the fucking place. You know, like... Uh, super intricate fucking uh, mechanics like the, the, the cut and take fucking mechanic and all that stuff. Cool little little fucking uh, uh, mechanic. I like it. But as far as the Metal Gear franchise goes, as far as the realm of Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, 
you, you just didn't cut the mustard, man. It's just, it's just not good. It's not good as a Metal Gear game. Um, uh, you should do Splinter Cell list. Oh, I will. That's going to be my next ranking list. Trust me. Definitely. So, you know, like I said, I don't have any footage for this game, so I'm not going to show footage for this game. I'm going to show footage for all the other games, but this particular one, nah. Don't have any footage. Don't want to play it. Don't want to stream it. Um, it's, it's, it's just a good game that, you know, I don't have any interest in playing. So, and I don't have any, anything against this game either. Like, honestly, if I'm being objective here, or if, no, if I'm being, sorry, if I'm being subjective here, I would play this game over, like, the next three on my list, be, or even the next four on my list, just because I think it's, like, a better game, but not a good Metal Gear game, so I have to put it down here. Um, yeah. Uh, like how you're straight up about it? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm straight up about pretty much everything, I, and sometimes almost to a fault. It, it, it's gotten me in trouble more times than you even want to fucking know in life. It's pretty rough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I can't help it. Uh, I've never played this one, never wanted to, didn't see it as a Metal Gear game. Exactly. Nathan, dude, you're, you're not missing out on anything, dude. Chronologically, this, play, this game takes place in, 2000, in the year 2018, which, uh, which is, a, you know what, I'm going to go over the, the, the years and the times that each game comes out and takes place so that we can, like, um, chronologically put, like, where each game belongs in the canon. This is the final game in the franchise, canonically. It's the, I guess you could say, sequel or the follow-up to Metal Gear Solid 4, which wrapped, it up, which wrapped up the story of Metal Gear absolutely perfectly, couldn't have fucking done it better myself. They did a brilliant job wrapping up the story with Metal Gear Solid 4. Why they thought this needed to be a continuum of that game, I, don't have, I have no idea, but it, it really doesn't matter because it doesn't really affect the story at all. There's nothing resembling the Metal Gear storyline in this game whatsoever. It, it, there's no nano, like, there's nano machines, and, and that's it. That's the only thing resembling anything from, from the Metal Gear franchise prior to this game. So, is there any story in this game uh, reveals Raiden's where, whereabouts after MGS2, I guess? There is a story to this game. It's, it's, I think it's worth uh, reading up on and checking out. Um, it, it's not as interesting as the Metal Gear franchise. But, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's still, I don't know. It's worth reading up on if you're an avid Metal Gear fan and you really want to, like... Find out what happened to Raiden and find out what happened to Rose and his kid and all that shit. I don't like what they did with Rose and his kid in this game. They, they, they kind of retconned the ending of MGS4 and it, it, that part really pissed me off. But uh, um, honestly, as far as the story goes in this freaking game, I barely remember anything of it. Because I played it once, I beat it once, and... Just wash my hands of it. I'm like, that's enough. I, 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 got, I know what this game's like. I played it, beat it, had my fill. I'll never play it again. I have no desire to play it again. I'll never stream it. It's not fun for me, but I can understand 100% why people would like this game. I am totally not going to shit on anybody's opinion that has a, a positive outlook towards this particular game because it's still reasonably good despite being a horrible Metal Gear game. Anyways, moving on to some uh, slightly better shit. It's not that much better, but still somewhat better. Um, fucking piece of shit right here. Ah, tits. So, uh, this game sucks. I don't, I'm not a fan. Move this bitch over right there. There we go. Okay. So, Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes is totally number 10 because, it, okay, what they did was they, they gave, um, they, they charged us 40 bucks for a fucking demo that people can beat in like an hour if you suck and like 10 minutes if you're a speedrunner. Oh, fuck, I think like five minutes if you're a speedrunner. Like, it, it's crazy. 40 bucks for that? I mean, it's, they, there's hardly any content in this game. 
And it's so fuck. It's so sick. This shit was stupid. We could have just waited for him. Just fight. I know the sole purpose of this freaking demo was to, okay. Now the shit talking is gonna start. I didn't pick on Rising because it's so separated from this franchise. It's crazy. But I'm gonna start picking on shit now. This game deserves to get picked on because it's a fucking demo that we that they glorified and hyped up for MGS Five. Ground Zeroes is. It looks fucking gorgeous. It plays so smooth. It's incredibly smooth to play. It feels like, you know, the Fox engine is a thing in this game. It's, it's it, for the first time, it's just fucking so sick. This game is um, great while it lasts, which is not fucking long at all. Like, an hour if you suck ass. Like, I sucked so much ass. This is when I first played this, like, my, when I let's play this bitch, I don't even want to know how long ago, fucking seven years ago, six years ago, when this first came out. And uh, I was super disappointed because I sucked so much ass and I still managed to beat it in like an hour. So uh, I was like, man, if this is the way it's going to fucking go. The, the saving grace of this is you play as Big Boss, which is great because he's my favorite Metal Gear character. I love Big Boss. He's, uh, he's the best. But besides that, I mean, it, it doesn't even, there's nothing to this freaking game. I'm going to fast forward this bitch a little bit. I don't want to stare at fucking green screen all day. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's solid for what it is. But what it is is like hardly anything. It's like you fucking, it's like you bake a, a batch of, of the, the best chocolate chip cookies you've ever fucking seen in your life. They taste like fucking sex. It's so fucking awesome. And it, and, you, and you're only allowed to eat one bite of one cookie, and you've got this big batch of cookies, and you want cookies so bad. This is an actual uh, title for the franchise. It's a legit separate release that, is, that belongs in the canon because it, it bridges the gap between Peace Walker and MGS5. And it's a fucking five-minute just lame turd. There's not really much to it, and what what can, what else can I say about it? You know, there's ex, there's there's besides the main campaign, there's a couple other things you can do like side ops and shit and and, and all that kind of stuff. But I don't care about that. I'm in in it for the canon. I want to experience the story. I, I'm not the biggest fan of. Uh, thanks, Cami, for for uh, sending out the Discord link. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of. Side ops and shit. I, I could care less. I just wanted to play the game for you know what it was, and what it was was not much. And I felt like I had the biggest set of blue balls when this game was over. Um, fortunately, I didn't play it until MGS Five was already out, so I could play this and MGS Five back to back. However, I didn't play. I didn't do that. My first time ever playing MGS Five was on stream with you guys not that long ago. So, um. Anyways, game's all right, just too fucking short. Number nine. Got oh, tits. Got it. Boom. Nailed it. First try. All right. So, this game's whatever. You know, it, it's, it's not awful. It's so old. It's, it's so old. It, it, it's, this game came out in 1980 fucking seven, man. Does it even stand a chance against the rest of the franchise? Like, come on. Like, like picking on this game is like picking on an 80 year old woman. Like, you, 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 sh you shouldn't, nobody should ever pick on this game. This game is fucking great for what it is. Okay? I mean, look at this shit. I'm going to show you some footage of me streaming this, this thing. Um, I streamed this a long time ago. I feel asleep. Yeah, dude, for real though, right? <laughs> you know, like, the fucking, this game is old. The parachute intro on NES, though, was super sick. Yeah, it was. It's not in this game, unfortunately, but that was cool. But, man, this game was uh, something else. <clears throat> it was revolutionary for its time. The story of this is... Oh, fuck, I didn't even mention the fact that Ground Zeroes takes place in, two, uh, in uh, 19, uh, 1975, by the way, as the chrono... So the, the story goes continuum of that shit takes place in 1975 ground zero is what you just saw that came out on the playstation 4 this game came out on the nintendo the original nintendo in 1987 and the uh msx 2 computer in 1987 
and it's it takes place in 1995, 20 years after Ground Zeroes. This is the first game we ever get to play as Solid Snake. This is the beginning of the Solid Snake era. So, is it a cool game for that sense? Hell yeah. Is it completely like obscure and like lacking in all the Metal Gear elements that we know of today and that we're used to today? Oh fuck yeah, it is. Um, yo, that's fucking Kyle Reese. Yeah, absolutely. Kyle Reese was the was the inspiration for fucking uh, Metal Gear Solid or uh, Solid Snake. I mean, it's good in in that time and still fun now. I'm sure retro games are the best. This is still a good game. Um, I still enjoy playing this, but if but Metal Gear Two is a retro game. I'm calling out everyone that remembers 1987. Anyone? Anyone besides me? <laughs> I was three years from being born yet, so hell nah. Um, but, yeah, this game's three years older than me. This is the only game in the franchise that came out before I, before I came out. Of the womb, not the closet. Just saying. Um, so what I'm saying is, you know, you can't pick on this game. This game is just, it is what it is. It's a good game. But okay, so... Like I said, you can't pick on this game. This game is, it is what it is. Look at how fucking janky this thing is. Oh shit, hold on. It's, it's like very, um, it's very old school difficult too. You have no idea what the fuck you're doing. You have no idea where anything is. You, it doesn't tell you shit. Um, it repeats itself over and over again, which still doesn't tell you shit. It's so incredibly janky. But anyway, so moving on. This game was tight. For its time, it was revolutionary. It spawned a genre in itself. This is pretty much the first stealth action shooter in the history of ever. Um, so we have Metal Gear to thank for every game that pretty much I enjoy and, and a lot of games that the chat enjoys. And, and, and you guys just in general, people just in general. This game spawned all of that. So, you know, big round of applause to Metal Gear 1, the first of its kind to spawn a legacy that was just, it's unsurpassable. Unfucking surpassable. It's incredible. But we'll go, let's go on to number, uh, number eight. Fuck this game. It's bullshit. This is the first one I'm actually going to talk some shit about. This game sucks. I have a huge problem with this one because, um, it's, it's so shit. It, it just, it pissed me so fucking off. I, I don't like this game. Um, if I'm being completely honest about, about Metal Gear fucking Solid 2, I'm trying to find a good spot so we can actually get some footage on this bitch. Whatever, let's watch some cutscenes. Um, the thing about Metal Gear Solid 2, come on, bitch. Go. Oh, there we go. Hell yeah. Sick. Boom. Tanker part is sick. That's the part that really, it, it, it hurts my heart, though. Ooh, about to get spicy eggs. Yeah, I knew that shit's gonna fucking go down in this chat. This game sucks, though. We gotta be real. This game is trash. Um, oh, we lo all love the naked spin wheel. <laughs> I love watching Raiden's cooch as we do that fucking front, front flip thing. It's so sick. But... Okay, I'm going to tell you a time of an age when I was 11 years old. Um, and I had an allowance. Uh, for, well, no, I did I have a paper route or I had an allowance. I had one of those. And this game was not out yet. And um, there was a game that came out called Zone of the Enders, right? Zone of the Enders was whatever. It's forgotten to time. Nobody cares about that game. It was trash. I played it for like 10 minutes and thought it sucked, so I put it away. But the reason I bought that game and the reason millions of people bought that fucking game is because it had the demo to this fucking game, and it even had that as like a marketing ploy on the game's box in front of like everything. Like, the, it was like, okay, Zone of the Enders, the Metal Gear Solid 2 demo! Fucking buy our game, please! Buy our shitty game! We have the demo for Metal Gear, please do it! Please give us money! So the fucking <laughs> it was it it was a bad game. It relied on the demo of this game. So I played the demo and I was instantly hooked. I loved the demo because it was just the tanker section. You played a, uh, the tanker section where you play a solid snake on the demo of Zone of the Enders, and I thought that was cool. 
And the tanker section of of, Zone, of uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 is the best part of this entire game. So I go into that thinking, holy shit, this is going to be the best game ever. It's like way better than MGS1. I'm like so fucking pumped. And then the game comes out. And I'm not alone in this. I know there's people that went that experienced the exact same shit that I did. But I, I'm just, from my ex- personal experience, this is what happened to me, all right? The game comes out. I buy the game. Everybody's all stoked for the game on day one release. The internet isn't really that big of a thing yet. It's still kind of like up and coming. So there's no like forums or message boards or anything like that. Nothing's really like going that way just yet. So there's no leaks at all. Kojima was a, is a god when it comes to n- not leaking shit before it's time. So, the game comes out, I pop it in my PS2, I play the tanker section again, I'm still in love, I'm having such a blast. And then, uh, oh man. Just all the feelings are coming back. Just depression, dude, I was so upset. So I start fucking getting really excited at the end of the tanker section, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm into the game, and I'm super stoked. And then all of a sudden I said, now entering Big Shell area, whatever the fuck Raiden says at the beginning. I'm like, that, what the fuck voice is that shit? That's not Solid Snake. Solid Snake doesn't sound like a bitch. Colonel, I've managed to avoid drowning. The fuck is this guy? He's got this skull mask on and shit. He's got these all fucking like in this shit, shitty tight swimming gear. And it's like, what is this? This is like MGS1, the intro to MGS1, but shitty. What happened? What's going on? Roy Camel's back. That's cool. But who's this bitch? This isn't Snake. And then he takes off his mask. Am I playing as a chick? Am I playing as a chick with an Adam's apple? What? Oh, this guy's name is Snake too. Oh no, his new code name is Raiden. Raiden, yeah, because this guy be riding some dick on his fucking spare time. He looks like he'd be doing it. Oh my god, man! I, I was like, those are the, those are my thoughts at an eleven year old age. I was I was pissed. I was I'm like, there's no way this guy is the main and the main protagonist of this game. So I I just I gave the game the benefit of the doubt, and I thought, okay. I'm going I'm to play it, and, and we'll see what happens. We go, we progress into the game. I get to the boss fight. I get to Fortune's boss fight. I get to Fat Man's boss fight. I'm like, I'm actually beating bosses as this bitch riding. I'm beating bosses right now. <sighs> Hold on, where are we at? Can I just fast forward this bitch? I don't want to get to the... Ah, right, fuck it. Right there is good. Um, in his defense, he was badass in four. I will say, yeah, but this this is just we're just we're talking about two right now. Four will come. Four has its time. This right now is about this turd, this curly piece of shit. The president thought he was a prostitute when he found him. He thought he was a chick too. He even grabbed his crotch. He's like, "You're a man." Hmm. Well, that's gross. You know, like fucking Shimon, dude. Anyway, so. You're going through them all? I'm going through the... Yeah, I'm ranking them all. I'm ranking the all the canon games. This is number eight. Uh, I, I just finished Metal Gear Rising, Metal Gear Solid Five, Ground Zeroes, and Metal Gear 1, and now we're on the eighth, eighth place, which is this piece of shit. And uh, if we're being objective here, I'm going to send you a fucking olive branch. I'm just, I'll extend you guys an olive branch to say that this is not a bad game. But it's as far as the Metal Gear franchise is concerned, this guy, this game can suck my dick. I hate this game. It's a good game that sucks ass. I, that's pretty much my opinion about this piece of shit. Because it made me so mad. I don't think I've ever been that pissed in the history of me buying video games. Well, no, nah, that's not true. I've been pissed about lots of video games. But this one actually like hurt my heart. I was such an avid Metal Gear fan, as were so many millions of fucking people that were fucked over the same way I was. We had no idea that we had a, there was a bait and switch waiting for us on the other end when we bought this fucking game. 
because Kojima was trolling everybody. But he was trolling everybody from the get-go, man. He was trolling everybody. So, and we had no idea until like a week or two after everybody started buying this game and, and words started getting out and shit. And then fucking uh, everybody was talking shit about Kojima for like, I don't know, two or three months. Some people loved that, this game. Some people, well, a lot more people hated it. This was definitely the black sheep of the franchise for quite a while. It, it just the 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 the, um, the characters. All right, Kevin, I'll see you in a sec, bro. Oh, hold up, Nathan Ryden. Ryden, you used to be such a pussy. Now you're a badass. I mean, he he evolves. His character evolves in MGS Four and MGS Rising and shit. But this shit, he's like full on. Full bitch mode in this game. He's like 100% of bitch mode. Like, I didn't know that. Colonel didn't tell me that. Oh. Rose, are you there, Rose? Jack, do you know what today is, Jack? No, Rose. Tell me what today is. Oh, it's okay. I'll wait till you remember. It does. Can't this wait until after the mission, Rose? No, Jack, it's really important. She's just fucking talking about when you fucking met. But you're on a mission that's life or death trying to save the president of the United States and stop fucking terrorists from doing some shit. And she's like trying to get on your ass about how fucking what, what day you met. Are you kidding me right now? Rose can, she can get, take a fucking hike. Rose sucks. Okay, Rose is trash. I hate rat. I hate Rose. She was so, uh, I was so upset when Rose was getting, getting in and, and, and Kodak calling us with that shit. That pissed me right off. Pissed everybody off. Nobody likes Rose. Ugh, get out of here, man. And then and then riding on top of that? Man. But tell us how you really feel. Man, I can't. If I told you how I really feel, I'd get Twitch banned. I'm not allowed to do that. Legally, I'm not allowed to do that. But hells yeah, what's going on, man? <laughs> how you doing? Anyway, so... Jack, you remember 1997? Who gives a fuck about it? Yeah, exactly, right? The commercial for this game was Solid Snake shooting SWAT teams in the kitchen on the boat like a badass. Then, and then this riding bullshit. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, dude. Fuck. So, anyways, we beat the tanker section. We get to the plant, and everything just turns to shit. The plant has this blonde, blonde-haired little bitch with like obviously hardly any balls because he's got you know the fucking president thought he was a chick. He doesn't have he doesn't have no bulge down there. He's a he's a, he's a you know it, it's it, it's the guy looks like a chick, sounds like a chick, acts like a bitch. Not a chick, because not all chicks are bitches, and not all men are not bitches. So don't get me wrong. Don't don't think I'm saying the wrong thing here. But what I'm saying is, this guy is a bitch in this game. Raiden's a bitch in this game. It's not fun to play as him. You miss Snake every step of the way. And uh, the bait and switch is what really pissed me off. All the characters are fucking stupid. Fat Man is ridiculous. Who cares about fortune? Um... Solidus is like a poor man's liquid snake. Ocelot is still awesome. Speak of the devil. He is still fucking awesome. But he's not in the game enough as far as I'm concerned. I wish there was like a boss fight with him. That would have been sick. Um, and Vamp is like this eccentric fucking... Yeah, queen. Like... Fucking... I don't even... Uh, I just... he Vamp is alright. But... Everybody else? Nah, fuck that. Roy Campbell isn't even in this game. He's a fucking AI. His voice is in the game, but he's an AI this whole time. It's so dumb. It's, why did they do that? I, I hate that they fucking did that. It really, really made me mad. I, I don't know. What, I don't know. Where's the fucking? There we go. So, anyways, I'm get I, I, I'm getting flustered talking about this piece of shit. I I don't like this game as far as Metal Gear franchise goes because of how it made me feel when I first bought it. I didn't like the the bait and switch that it did, and I felt like it kind of betrayed the fan base. So I'm always gonna have a bit of a problem with this game. And in in terms of like get general gameplay and getting through it, and the story and just everything, it's not fun. I would much rather play any other game on the list that's above this one before this ever again. This game. Just, I'm going to say this game sucks. This game just genuinely sucks. I don't know why it's number eight and not the last place. Because I think I'd still rather play this than the three before it. Mostly because, you know, first of all, with Metal Gear 1, like I said, you're picking on an 80-year-old. 
MGS5 Ground Zeroes is a demo, and Metal Gear Rising is so far separated from the franchise, it doesn't even count as part of the freaking franchise. Most people leave, them, leave that game off their freaking ranking lists. So really, this is where the bottom of the list should be considered, because every game above this is completely Metal Gear, and this is the worst of all of that. So, that's my opinion. If you let the big shell get destroyed, the game would have ended there. Obviously, Ocelot, nice insight. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Vamp was pretty sick, but Snake as Pliskin when everybody knew it was Snake. Yeah, I know, right? Iroquois Pliskin? Give me a fuck right off. I'm Pliskin. Iroquois Pliskin. No, I'm not Solid Snake. Stop impersonating Solid Snake, Solidus. Like, come on, dude. Get the fuck out of here. The end of the game is a pretty good mind fuck. The end of the game is a pure mind fuck. And it's so much fucking dialogue. Like, get out of here with these cutscenes, man. What are you. This game is 49% cutscenes and 51% gameplay. It's j almost as bad as MGS4 when it comes to the cutscenes. Except the only difference is the cutscenes of this game, most of them are trash. Um, I, don't, I, I just don't really have any fun playing this game. It sucks. So. I'll probably never play it again on stream unless I'm doing like a marathon. Um, I don't know. I, I, maybe I will, maybe I won't. I'm not saying I, it's a for sure thing I'll never play it on stream again, but, you know, I would rather not, you know. You do a really good David Hater. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. I don't know. I just, I just, I take the time to try to learn impressions that I, that I like. And I don't like riding, so I make him sound like a bitch. Rose, we managed to avoid drowning. Fuck right off. I wish you didn't. Anyways, let's move on before we get too flustered. That was fun to shit talk, but let's keep going with the list because I want to get to some good shit. Um, all right. Number seven. Now, I was really, 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 really um, wanting to put this a little higher on my list. But the competition is just too fucking steep, man. Love that you did voice of Portable Ops. I can't believe they had no voiceover. Yeah, that that part kind of bugged me too. I wasn't a big fan of that, but um, this game is pretty amazing for what it is. This is a PSP exclusive. I had to play this on an emulator to get any kind of reasonable quality out of this shit. Jesus Christ! I feel like the the me in the back is gonna eat the me in the front. This is a little intimidating. I should probably make myself a little bigger. This game was sick. I like Portable Ops a lot. I honestly just have to put it here because what it, it's, the competition's just too steep. It's got so many good games. From here on out, all these games are tight. There's like hardly anything to shit talk about these games. Maybe a little bit about Peace Walker, but we'll get to that one in a sec. Portable Ops is like this, for example. The dragging bodies to the back of the truck. You know, it's an obvious prototype for what the future holds with the, with the photon, uh, Fulton uh, system. Um... The Fulton recovery system was perfect, and they did that for Peace Walker and MGS5. With this game, you're carrying all the bodies back on your own, but you know this is—you got to start somewhere, right? You got to start somewhere. You, you, you got to respect it for that. It's a PSP exclusive, so you can only play it on the PSP, and it's a genuinely canon and solid Metal Gear Solid title. Um, pun intended, because Nico made me aware of it. Uh, it's just a good game. I wish it was part of the MGS collection. So I played this on the emulator, hence why it's you know better quality than it would have been if I had recorded this on a PSP. But it's number seven on my list because it's a prototype to what would eventually become Metal Gear Solid Five, which is a great game. And uh, it, it, it's you know like I said with picking on a uh, an eighty year old for Metal Gear One, this game's like. I don't know. To pick on this game would be like picking on a three-year-old. You know, they're 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 only able to do so much. You know, um, they have a lot to offer because of what they will eventually become uh, as a human being, or as a, in this in this case as a game. But they're still, you know, they they're, they're not quite there yet. That's basically what this game's all about. It's it's kind of it's great for what it is, but what it is is 
a bit lackluster because it's a fucking PSP title. Uh, it's mission based. You know, you go from mission to mission. You take you you, you don't actually drive your truck, but you basically take. Uh, the, there's a mechanic in the game where you you're in a truck. You meet Roy Campbell in this game. This is where Big Boss meets Roy Campbell in the storyline. It takes place in 1971, or sorry, 1970, and. Uh, it's the direct follow-up to, to Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Um, so I thought that was super interesting. The characters in this game are really interesting. You know, you got Gene. Uh, far and above, between this and Peace Walker, the characters in this game are way better. Way better. The story in this game is way better than Peace Walker. The, uh, the feel of this game is janky. And the um, gameplay is janky. The tone and the atmosphere is not as good as Peace Walker either, so I have to bump it down a bit because of that. But it's just barely, as far as I'm concerned, you can already tell what number six is going to be. But as far as I'm concerned, this is comfortably sitting at number seven. Should have been number six, but it's just not quite on that level. Portable Ops is just lacking on too many elements, and you've you got to give it credit because it had limited technology to work with. And it still managed to be a super entertaining PSP title. Arguably the best PSP title on the console. In my opinion, it was Seven Builder Logan's Shadow, Seven Builder Dark Mirror. But this game is like a lot of people's favorite PSP game of all time. So, and I understand why. It's a great addition to the franchise. Um, it's just kind of like, it, it's just, it, it feels like a prototype. You know, it, it does really feel like a prototype. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's up against some games that mastered the craft, and this one's still kind of figuring shit out. So it's not going to be very, very high on the list. The boss fights, though, holy shit, the boss fights are awesome. Uh, I really liked fighting Null, even though it was super simple. You need to fight Null, who is Gray Fox, in this game. Like, there's so many throwbacks to the old games. There's Gray Fox... There's, there's fucking <clears throat> Roy Campbell. Um, <clears throat> you know, you get to see Sigint again. You get to see Paramedic again and the Kodak calls from MGS3. You know, it, like stuff like that really matters, you know? None of that's President Peace Walker. Peace Walker is introducing you to a whole new set of characters. So for that, I have to, like, I have to put this, uh, that aspect above Peace Walker. But as far as, the, everything else goes, the stuff that actually counts, the meat and potatoes, the stuff that people are going to really focus on, the game part of it is not as good because it's just a prototype. And they almost nailed it, but not quite. Um, that's really all I got to say about Portable Ops. Good story, good characters, good boss fights. Gene is a very memorable final boss. I really love Gene. I like that they did the whole... Um, he gives Big Boss the end of the philosopher's or the uh, the other half of the philosopher's legacy. Big Boss takes that and creates an army with it. Uh, goes to uh, Zero with that shit, and then him and Zero part ways in the early seventies after the Les Enfants Terribles project goes through. And um, Big Boss against Big Boss's will, he gets pissed. He leaves Zero, and then he goes and creates Militaire Sans Frontières and some of the freaking. Dudes that you capture in this game follow you onto Peace Walker. I love that shit. The whole San Geronimo incident in this game is a memorable uh, piece of the story. And I think they should include this on an HD remaster. They really should. Because this is a solid follow-up to MGS3. Even if it's kind of bare bones in terms of gameplay, the story is there. And it, gives, it, it, fills, every, it fills in the gaps where a lot of games... Um, uh, where... Um, a lot of games in other franchises, sequels and that and whatnot, wouldn't aren't necessarily that good at doing that. This game is great at doing that, and it's amazing that it's a fucking PSP title. So huge props to this game. Can't put it any higher than seven, but still really enjoyed it. We'll definitely play this again one day on stream, even. And I, yeah, I think anybody who hasn't played this shit, you guys should totally check it out. Peace Walker uh, is great, but Portable Ops is fucking awesome too. And they're both worth playing, 100%. So, obviously, we're going to go to number six now. And you guys know it was fucking Peace Walker. Um, ever so slightly better because the gameplay is just seriously sick. Um, the fact that it's on an HD remaster is great. I love that aspect of it. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's so fucking cool because you can even co-op in this shit on the HD remaster. 
like and, well and on the PSP as well but on, like it, it originally came out for the PSP which is why a lot of people compare it to Portable Ops because you know stuff because for that reason alone you know PSP title so and there's they're the only two PSP titles in the whole franchise this is a great game um the problem I have with this game is that there is uh, no human interaction in terms of uh, gameplay and boss fights when it comes to, like, characters. All the boss fights are AIs. They're all, like, machines, AIs. Like, so there's no real memorable, significant characters that really give you a whole lot to focus on in terms of, uh, a, from a narrative perspective. Uh, Hot Coldman is a completely forgettable dude. What's the other guy's name? I don't even remember the other guy's name. Um, what's his fucking name? Uh, the dude at the very end with the, with, the, with the fake hand. What the fuck's his name? There's Dr. Strangelove, who's Hal Emmerich's mother, which I think is great. They introduced us to uh, Dr. Strangelove and Huey Emmerich, which is uh, Hal Emmerich's uh, Otacon's parents. I think that's a great aspect for this game. You get to kind of explore the back the back uh, story of, of Solid Snake and of Otacon in this game, which is kind of cool. They close up the boss's story in this game 100% by the end. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a welcome addition. I like that it kind of bridges the gap a little more between MGS3 and MGS5, but at the same time, I think Portable Ops did it better, personally, uh, story-wise. But gameplay wise, I mean, look at this shit. There's, I'm, I'm playing with who am I playing with right now? Oh, I'm playing with uh, Pan Dutney at the moment. Uh, I did a lot of co-op with Big Red in this. Did co-op with Artur's in this on stream. This is just a solid co-op experience. Co-op games are always super fucking fun, um, you know, because they're just it's it's team team operated. Teams team stuff is always fucking a blast. So, the, but the problem is like, look at all this shit. Um, we're, we're shooting AI things here, and yeah, there's dudes in the in the game. There's the full time recovery system that's definitely better than the uh, the dragging people uh, with with your own strength to the frickin' uh, to the truck all that way. In this in this game, you have the full time recovery system. You go up to the body, you press triangle, boom, they're already part of your recruits now. Now these guys work for you. It's freaking great. Um, that's a great addition to the gameplay. Uh, the gameplay overall in this game is definitely, definitely better than Portable Ops. I don't think anybody can even dispute that. Like, this is a great fucking game when it comes to the gameplay. The story, man. Oh, shit. Like, 1974 is when this game takes place. Exactly 10 years after MGS3. Um, and holy shit, do they just, like, force it down your throat that this is the uh, sequel to MGS3, not Portable Ops. They even mention at the beginning of the, of this game, Kaz even says to Big Boss on the intercom, he's like, yeah, well, fuck, finally we can put that incident, the, the San Geronimo incident behind us. Like, it doesn't even want to acknowledge that Portable Ops even fucking happened because it just doesn't care about that shit because Kojima didn't direct it, he just wrote it. Or co-wrote it, or produced, no, he produced it. So, um, his involvement for it with or with it wasn't as drastic as it was for this game, which is why they included this game in the HD collection and not Portable Ops, um, despite both games being canon entries. Uh, so that kind of that kind of upset me a little bit, but uh, I, I I know I was praising number seven a second ago when I have this at number six, and I'm kind of talking a little bit of shit, but Peace Walker just kind of. Um, kind of like makes me really happy in some aspects and then really grinds my gears in other aspects whereas portable loss is like very like flat all around peace walker was like a an, this type of experience you know what i mean so it's like up it has its major ups and downs when the ups are up it's super super up but when it's down holy fuck it's down like it, it it's almost like mgs2 level down it, it's disappointing in that aspect i only got like quarter of the way through the game before i stopped playing it wish i kept playing I think you should keep uh, try try playing this one again because this is a good game. It's worth definitely, really any game from s number seven up. I recommend to absolutely everybody. I think these games are fucking great. The, like from number seven up, we're in the good, we're in the great game territory. Like these games are becoming phenomenal. Um, so Peace Walker, another phenomenal game. 
The co-op aspect is phenomenal. Uh, the gameplay is phenomenal. The recruitment uh, thing is phenomenal. Building mother base is phenomenal. The whole story and the, you know, like, that's where it loses me, the, the story aspect. And you have to dock a lot of points for that because what is Metal Gear all about? We play the freaking franchise for the story. Peace Walker feels like a full-fledged PS3 game that came from a PSP game. Um, it's like a, a completely updated version of Portable Ops. But like I said, the story, the characters, the, the, uh, the, just everything about the non-gameplay aspects, way worse than Portable Ops. But the gameplay is so good, I had to put it above Portable Ops because the gameplay is, is just perfect. You can even do co-op with, with friends. So um, that's, what, uh, that's how I played this when we were streaming it. So, yeah, really, uh, honestly, though, Peace Walker's great. I'd definitely play it again. Um, I beat it on stream. I even built Zeke, and then we fought Zeke as a team and kicked the shit out of it, and, and uh, that was it. And then we got the real ending, and then I moved on to MGS5, and that was that. But just a great game. Peace Walker's a great game. Really wish they did the story better. Really wish they did the characters better. We could have used some human boss fights. That would have been nice instead of fighting nothing but AIs the whole time. That sucked. But uh, besides that, Peace Walker's a good game. I, I recommend it to everybody. Building Mother Base. Really great idea. They, they like completely advanced on what Portable Ops started. They took that formula and expanded upon it uh, and made everything so much more updated and, and fresh and feel like you were accomplishing something when you built Mother Base instead of like, it kind of felt like a chore almost in Portable Ops, whereas in this game, it's like you're looking forward to doing it, you know? But anyways, yeah, this is a good game. I recommend everybody play it. You know, don't be discouraged by the shitty story. Just, you know, it, it is, it's a decent gap filler. I think Portable Ops definitely bridged the gap between MGS3 and MGS5 better, like I said. But this game fills in that little, that last little bit. Um, it, it at least kind of explains why uh, Big Boss left Zero and started Militaire Sans Frontier after the San Geronimo uh, incident. Okay, moving on to number five. There we go. Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. See that there? This game's fucking incredible. It is literally Metal Gear Solid, but on a Nintendo console. It's fucking amazing. Uh, I, I don't know, like, this is literally where Metal Gear began, dude. This is the beginning of Metal Gear, as far as I'm concerned. They, they took the formula that this game started and improved upon it and, and gave us Metal Gear Solid 1. And that's why this game will always be legendary. I wish it was more talked about than uh, it is. This is Metal Gear Solid, but on the Nintendo. Like, it's... It's a Metal Gear Solid. It's the original Metal Gear Solid. But it was before that game came out. By like eight years before that game came out. Crazy. Just crazy to think. This game came out in 1990. This game is as old as I am. And it is fucking awesome. Um, anybody who's never played this game, you're doing yourself a disservice because this game is fucking sick. It, it, if you played Metal Gear Solid 1... And you've never played Metal Gear One or Metal Gear Two Solid Snake. Um, you play this game and you feel like holy shit. Um, like this is Metal Gear Solid, except like everything about the game, like the the whole uh, following a, 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 a like you follow a Green Beret person in this game, just like you did with Meryl in the for, in Metal Gear Solid. You know, uh, the ending boss fight with D is very reminiscent of fucking um, Rex from Metal Gear Solid. Your conflict with Gray Fox in this game is reminiscent of your conflict with Liquid Snake. Um, Big Boss is in this game as the final boss. It's fucking cool, man. Like, there, there's so many really interesting things about this game uh, that, that just, like, every single aspect you can pick it out and be like i recognize that i recognize that i recognize that there's so many things from mgs1 in this game it's like they basically remade this game and brought it out as mgs1 it's a great fucking game um 
I can't like talk about amazing retro games. This is one of the coolest retro games I've ever played in my life. I, I love retro games. I love games like this old. This is the, like, the Nintendo console was the first console I ever played. First console I ever owned as a child. And, I mean, this game has that, has Nintendo graphics, but it only came out on the M MSX2. But uh, everything about this game is just really cool, man. I, I love the, they, they, they have codec conversations in this game. Roy Campbell's in this game. So look at that sick boss fight. I had a stinger missile, and you're like following it along with the full time or the, the the radar system on the top right there. You know, like it's so innovative, man. It's fucking innovative as hell. Love this shit. This game's objectively better than Peace Walker, I find, because it's like Metal Gear Solid One, but in this fucking, but in, but in with these types of graphics. You know, look at this shit. They even have Kodak conversations. There are cutscenes. The, the, what game has this type of stuff in in nineteen fucking ninety? You know, before the Super Nintendo even came out. You know, like unbelievable, dude. He's a genius when he made an NES game that's two five with PS four games. Um, oh yeah, top five with PS four games. Yeah, exactly, man. Oh, a hundred percent. Like. This game is the beginning, uh, well, I mean, you could argue that Metal Gear 1 is the beginning of his genius, but I think his genius, uh, Kojima's genius, truly comes out in this game for the first time. Metal Gear comes out uh, for the MSX, and uh, it's a huge success, because it's a stealth game, there aren't any stealth games out yet, because it's 1987 and all that shit. Everybody loves that shit, so Nintendo ports it over to the Nintendo console, they changed the game entirely. It's a completely different version of the game. There, Metal Gear isn't even in the Nintendo version of Metal Gear. It's fucking weird. Um, you fight a big-ass computer at the end of the game, and that's it. It's actually terrible. The game's really bad compared to the original Metal Gear. Um, so Nintendo made a sequel against Kojima's... Like, Kojima didn't have anything to do with it, and that sequel's called Metal Gear Snake's Revenge, or just Snake's Revenge. And it's also a big steaming pile of shit. Game's not very fun. It's it, it it's nothing like actual Metal Gear. It, it's trash. So what ended up happening was um, somebody told Kojima on a bus that hey, there's gonna be a sequel coming out to your game that you made. It's called Snake's Revenge. And he's like, what the fuck? Snake's Revenge. Oh shit. Well, uh, I'm gonna make a sequel, and it's gonna be way the fuck better than that piece of shit. And then he literally did that. Snake's Revenge sucks, and this game is, like, legendarily good. It is so... They literally took everything that this game was, put it over to the PS1, and that became MGS1. This is the original Metal Gear Solid, as far as I'm concerned. Um, the reason it's lower than Metal Gear Solid and a few other games on this list is because it's a fucking Nintendo game. Like, it's got such huge competition, man. So, I don't care, though. The story, the characters, fucking voice acting by me. I'm just kidding. It's not that great. Uh, the story, the characters, the fucking gameplay, it, just everything about it. The, the game is not as cryptic as Metal Gear 1. It's it, it, the, the lack of crypticness, if that's even a fucking word, isn't a thing anymore. This game is just... It, hit, it hits every nail on the fucking head as far as success goes. This is a phenomenal game. I recommend everybody play this shit. Metal Gear 2 is something special, for real. Something special. Um, it's a 30-year-old, 31-year-old game soon, and it is one of the greatest games still ever made to this day because Metal Gear 2 is phenomenal. Snake's Revenge Trash didn't even make the list. An intro, blinking screen, and trash. Well, I mean, fucking Snake's Revenge isn't really canon. I'm only including the canon lists. So, only canon games appear on this list. This game is canon. This game uh, takes place in 1999, but it came out in 1990. So, we're f Solid Snake is like four or five years in his, into his career at this point. So, he's a, a pretty weathered, bit of a veteran person now. He's, he's five years in or something like that. I think he started in 94 or 95. He infiltrated Outer Heaven in, in Metal Gear 1. And then in 99, now he's infiltrating Zanzibar Land, and he's already a legend in this game. Metal Gear 2 deserves the number five spot. I wish I could, I wish I could put it higher, but it's honestly the next four lists or four games on the list are 
legendarily good. Okay, from number four on, these games are all legendary. We're going to move on to number four now. But I do, oh, I want to say one more, a couple things. The Metal Gear D fight is pretty cool for a 1990 game. And I love the, the fist fight at the end with um, Gray Fox. So fucking sick. And the, the story impact, the impact that that fight has from this game on the story as a whole, where Solid Snake and Gray Fox duke it out, the impact that that fight has on the story is insane. Like, it's pretty a- amazing. Um, so, uh, and then obviously the lighter versus Big Boss. So fucking cool. The light, you use a lighter and a can of hairspray, that's fucking awesome. Um, just a super incredibly innovative game. Everybody deserves to fucking like experience this fucking wonderful game. This game is amazing. All right, we're going to move on. Number four. From here on up, these games are legendary. And there's really no debate about that. They're just fucking amazing. So here we go. Number four is this game is a fucking amazing movie. It's a wonderful movie. Uh, I love everything about this freaking awesome movie. Nothing bad about it, really. Uh, it's just that it's a huge, it's a movie, dude. Like, there is so much plot in this game that's not really even a freaking game, dude. It's a fucking movie. But it's it's one of the best movies you ever watch in your fucking life. This this movie's sick. Some snake ass for you right there. That's, that's uh, perfect, you know. Is the order the order of the game release? Nah, totally isn't. But... Um, I mean, this game came out in 2008. The other, my number five pick came out in 1990. So, you know, like, that's a fucking... I became an adult between the time of MG2 coming out and MGS4 coming out. I literally became an adult. I was born, and then I became an adult, and that's the time gap. So it's pretty fucking massive. But, um... Yeah. MGS4. Uh, what can I say? If it weren't for the fact that this is 49% gameplay and 51% cutscenes... Um, this would probably be my number three, but when I play a game, I want to play a game. I don't want to watch a movie. Despite the fact that granted these cutscenes, most of them are really cool. They add a lot to the plot. This game ends the franchise on a perfect note. Everything that this game did in terms of the story was perfect. The story was beautiful. Uh, the only, you only enjoy that movie if you know and understand most of the plot of the other games, though. Exactly, that's another problem. Metal Gear Solid 4 is a game made for Metal Gear Solid fans. You can't just jump into this game having never played a Metal Gear game in your life and, you know, enjoy yourself. Unless you don't give a fuck about the story, which, you know, a lot of people like the Metal Gear franchise and don't give a fuck about the story. I mean... Future said right there, I, I played all the games and I couldn't tell you shit about the story. A lot of people have that mentality. A lot of people don't fucking care. I care about the story. I like story-based games. That's part of the reason I'm such a huge fan of the Metal Gear franchise. But it's definitely a shame that you can't enjoy this unless you do feel, unless you do know the story. I gotta say, um, saddest ending to a video game probably in the history of video games. Um, definitely, uh, very, very sad ending. I didn't really, I didn't tear up or anything to this one. I teared up a little bit more to MGS3 ending, I think, because I liked the boss as a character. Um, but I really love Solid Snake as a character, but I I think maybe because Big Boss is my favorite all-time character in the franchise when, when the ending, spoiler alert, when the ending of this game happens, they're basically saying that Snake has like a few months to live and then the, the game the game ends, so Snake basically dies at the end of this game, and it's a sad ending, it really is, so, which MGS was the one where he crawled through a microwave, that's, that was this one, this, that's, that was the, actually, I can get to that scene real quick for you, real, uh, one sec, it's like right before the boss fight, this is it, yeah, this is it, I think, Yeah, that's it. Oh my god, he had to mash the fucking triangle button. I was mashing that bitch so fucking hard, it was so stupid. Um, how you feel seeing the end first time? The ending for the for the first time was uh, it was pretty rough. 
Not gonna lie, it was it was a rough it was a rough go for me because it was like saying goodbye to an old friend, you know, because a lot of us grew up. Whether you're fucking fifty years old or or whether you're twenty years old now, you're you grew up with these guys, you know, you you, you grew up with the with with Solid Snake. Um, a lot of us became a man with Solid Snake, you know, which sounds fucking disgusting, but you know what I, you know what I mean. Like we became a man or a woman. For for those females out there, uh, with Snake, you know, we we grew up together, and then all of a sudden we're just like saying goodbye. You know, it, it's that's why I think this game suffers a little bit because honestly, it's fucking that that impact that you feel as a Metal Gear fan at the end of the game, at the end of this game. You don't feel that at all if you're not a Metal Gear fan. So you can't start with this one. Or you shouldn't, anyways. You won't be able to appreciate it as much. You became a man with Solid Snake Future? Hey, whatever pronouns you prefer, I ain't judging. That sounds good. Uh, the look on Liam's second face right now. Because <laughs> my arm is killing me. I feel like I fucking jerked off for all fucking day. Mashing that triangle button, that was some rough shit. Oh, sick. Yeah, that's pretty much how I felt. I wanted to puke after that shit. That was ridiculous. Uh, rip to the goat. Yeah, seriously, the fucking greatest of all time goat. Goat of all time. Uh, that's right past the uh, mash that triangle button. <laughs> seriously, I, I, I was beat to shit after that. That was rough. That was fucked. I still remember exactly how my arm felt to this day. So that was crazy. Um, tough to think about. Great for this game, but to lose Snake was such sadness. Yeah, it really was. Um, the game ended perfectly, the way it should have ended. Honestly, endings are the hardest thing to do when it comes to video games and movies. And this one truly knocked it out of the park. The problem I have with this one is that you can't start here if you're a Metal Gear, if you're not a Metal Gear fan. You shouldn't start with MGS4. Um, but... Also, there's just too much cutscenes, uh, too many cutscenes, so it makes it tough to, uh, it makes it tough to sit through. I mean, what happens if you gotta fucking go, you know, like you gotta go, you got an appointment and shit, you know? I gotta go do something. I gotta go to work. I gotta make dinner. I gotta go pick up the wife. I gotta fucking pick up the kids. Oh shit! If I had kids, can you imagine? That would suck. You know, I gotta, I gotta do stuff with my day. But oh shit, there's this fucking hour and a half cutscene. That I can't fucking skip. I don't want to miss any of the fucking info. You know, like... But they're literally... I'm not even kidding. The ending cutscene of this fucking game is 90 minutes. That's just one cutscene. The ending cutscene of this fucking game is as long as a fucking B-movie. It's crazy. It's longer than some B-movies. It's insane. It, that's why I said... It's a movie. Because it fucking is. It's like watching 50 movies in one game. Because you're literally watching... The, I think the shortest cutscene in this game is like fucking five, to five, six minutes. The longest cutscene in this game is the end cutscene, which is 90 fucking minutes. So, yeah, I timed it. I actually streamed the ending cutscene only. And it was like an hour and 30-something minutes. It was ridiculous. So, this was... Uh, Hideo's vision personified and brought to brought to life this is the culmination of everything he's been working towards as a story writer and a game developer from the beginning of his of, his, of the original Metal Gear inception this was everything coming full circle and coming to an end and we were we were to say goodbye to an old friend and so did he you know it must have been probably pretty rough for him to write this game because it's a very sad game at the end, lots of twists and turns, lots of emotional ups and downs. It's a fucking emotional roller coaster, man. I mean, look at this fucking ending scene here. Look at this shit. This this final boss fight. You go right here to the final boss fight. This is, I mean, technically it's Ocelot versus Solid Snake because it it's not actually liquid. He's he's just under mind influence, thinking he's Liquid Snake. But he's, it's still Ocelot in charge of his own body, but uh, he truly believes he's, he's Liquid Snake. So it, we didn't know that at the time, though. So this boss fight 
is liquid versus solid snake. It's, it, I mean, how, what better of a fucking way to end such an incredible franchise? You know, you got the two main characters of this franchise coming together for one final showdown. And we, we say goodbye to both of them. You know, it, it's, a, it's just, it's really heartbreaking and it's really, um, it's a really special and unique, uh, uh, unique uh, thing for everybody, for 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 big time uh, Metal Gear franchise fans to to appreciate and to un- and to witness. MGS4, great game, amazing end of the franchise, movies and and heart- mostly just a movie, not a game. Still an amazing fucking game. Still an amazing fucking experience. Everybody should experience it. It's fucking amazing. Um, okay. We got three more to go, so we're going to enter the top three right now. Let's do it. Top three. Here we go. Fucking boom. Um, pretty much, this game is <clears throat> the exact opposite of MGS4 in every way, in every aspect. There isn't much about this game that resembles MGS4 uh, at all. It's it's completely the opposite, which is pretty funny. Because, I mean, like, talk about a lack of cutscenes. This game has hardly any cutscenes. This is the latest one in the franchise. This is the one that I've played the most recently. I streamed this the most recently. I had an absolute fucking blast with this shit. I loved it every second with this game it was so much fucking fun it's got amazing gameplay it's it's an open world metal gear game which is pretty unique to the franchise there is so much content in this freaking game it's insane this game is huge i streamed this like i don't know 25 hours 30 hours and i still am nowhere close to well i still got to do um the second chapter i've i've beat chapter one i killed the, uh, I killed a Sahelanthropus, and then um, I stopped the game. I haven't done Chapter 2 yet. I know that Eli takes control of the Sahelanthropus in Chapter 2, and then you fight him, and then you get the real ending and all that good shit. But uh, fucking, as far as this game goes, like I've, I've got enough experience with it to have an opinion. you know. Um, so I have an opinion about this game, and my opinion is that this game is fucking unbelievable. Best gameplay of the series. Absolutely. Everything is 100% the way that, like, from, from Portable Ops, when Portable Ops started, it's all come into development and it's, it's culminated to this point now where we are, it, it, we've come to the, to the end of the rope and this is what that was working towards. This is the perfected uh, system of what Portable Ops began and what Peace Walker extended on, and now we've got this. This is the definitive Metal Gear uh, experience in terms of gameplay. It's fucking incredible. Hardly any cutscenes. Most of the story is wrapped in fucking, what's it called? Uh, cassette tapes. The game takes place in 1984. Spoiler alert, you do not play as Big Boss in this game. You actually play as Punished Snake, or whatever the fuck his name is called. Uh, Punished Venom Snake, I guess his full name would be called. And in, and he's actually, fun fact, is the, this dude is the final boss in Metal Gear 1 from 1987. He's the guy you kill in Outer, in Outer Heaven at the very end of the game, before the base explodes. So we know the outcome of this guy's life. Like, we know what happens to him. He ends up fighting and losing to Solid Snake. But the dude is a fucking legend. He's fucking cool, man. Um, Venom is... And welcome to Editions of the Franchise. I like that they... I kind of honestly like that they gave him a different voice with Kiefer, Kiefer Sutherland because it makes sense. He's not Big Boss. He's Venom Snake. So Kiefer Sutherland voices Venom and David Hayter voices Big Boss and, and Solid Snake. This boss fight is, is nothing. It's, it's a small portion of what this game is actually like. Your base development is, is, f- is fully fleshed out in this game. Recruiting is, is uh, fully fleshed out. Um, weapons are fully fleshed out. Creating weapons and all this stuff, all this stuff is—it's all 100% fully fleshed out. You got everything. You can transport with a helicopter. You have a buddy system now. Um, you can bring your dog with you, which I, my opinion, is is the coolest fucking shit. 
Uh, you, you could bring a horse. You could bring a naked chick with you if you want. I mean, it's, it's sky's the fucking limit. You can bring everything with you. You can bring a robot, uh, you know, which is questionable, but whatever. It, it, it's a great. Everything about this game is 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 so perfect. I, I love I love this game. I had nothing but a fucking blast with this the whole time. Um, every single time I stopped this game on stream and went. Went to, and I left the stream, and then I come back the next day. I was always so excited to put the stream back on and play this game. Like it, you know, you, it's it's a great feeling when you're just you're looking forward. You just finished a five six hour stream, and you're already looking forward to the next one. You're too tired to keep going, but you want to keep going. It's like this game did that for me. Like I, I I'd never played it before, which definitely helped, but um. I felt like I was playing like I felt like I did when I started playing Hitman 3 or or or, or Simon Field of the Omega Strain online. Like I'm already looking forward to the next stream because this one was such a fucking blast cuz this game is so fucking sick. The chat interaction, everybody you guys all love this game. Like everybody's like has a, a special affinity for it in their in their hearts. Like it's only a 6-year-old game at this point, but it, it feels like it it feels brand new. It, it's a really welcomed addition to the franchise. I love the open world, expansive environments. The boss fights are super, uh, you know, nothing crazy about them, but they're still there. Uh, you have the skulls, you have Eli, you've got Quiet, you've got fucking uh, Sahal Anthropus, as you just saw, you got fucking uh, a couple other ones. Uh, don't remember all of them specifically, but <clears throat> I know that they're they're all pretty cool. The skulls you fight like eight times in a row, or, or five or six times, or something like that. I don't know, but they're they're repeat boss fights. But if the gameplay of MGS5 and all the things story of MGS4 were combined, you would probably have the ultimate masterpiece. It would it it would be the best Metal Gear game of all time, no question about it. Gameplay of this game combined with the story elements of MGS4, it would be the greatest experience of any Metal Gear player, a hundred percent, no question about it. Um, where it, it's funny how MGS4 and MGS5 are so contrasted because you got MGS4, which is mostly a movie with very little gameplay, and then you got MGS5, which is mostly gameplay with very little movie and very little cutscenes. So they're polar opposites, and uh, it's a, it's kind of a cool contrast. I like it, but the reason I put this over MGS4 is because what do I what do, what do I do, and what do ever, what does everybody do when you want to play a game? You want, you want gameplay. You want to actually go in and play the fucking video game. Yeah, story is, <clears throat> story is great, and Metal Gear is the best for story, but I, it, I don't want to sit through a half-hour fucking cutscene every time I get through a fucking mission or get through half a fucking mission, or you know what I mean? Like, it gets a little tedious. So, with this one, you're just going all the time. You're going nonstop, you know? And it, it's just a really great experience from a gameplay pers pers perspective. Uh, I'm pissed here, but even though you can see I'm pissed because I just got my ass kicked for like the 30th time versus the final Skulls fight, I still am having an absolute blast. I loved every second of this game. I was pissed and I still had so much fun. So, I mean, God, there's just so many fucking cool things about this game. The things you can do, like the recruitment system, the fucking the buddy system... Um, the stealth system, the, the chopper system, you can fucking fly in a chopper and shoot for, for fucking uh, the, the gun from the chopper and kill everybody in the area. You can go in stealth. Uh, you can uh, um, All the old school elements like the cardboard box are re retained in this game. It's super fucking uh, immersive, you know? It, it's a really cool style of game and i love that they brought back the animal system from metal gear solid 3 um not to the same extent you don't eat the animals anymore but you know plants and animals you can like build a zoo at mother base and fucking have animals there i caught a fucking bear one of the side ops in this game was catching a bear and bringing him back to mother base that is so fucking cool man it's super cool and unique i love that shit I think the only thing the gameplay is missing would be multiplayer, right? Besides the base rating thing, of course. Uh, yeah, I think so. It would be nice if this was co-op. Like, you know, if <clears throat> you could do it with two players, like one of you plays as Venom and the other guy plays as, like, the, the Poppy. That would be so sick. I would so totally pick the Poppy every time, man. He's the fucking bomb. DD is the shit. 
And he even has an, he's even missing an eye like me too. It's so sick. We're like matching. We're so fucking, it's, it's adorable. Uh, my boy, I, every chance I got to pet the dog in this game, I took it. I, every time I was just fucking standing around with nothing to do and I wasn't in a major hurry, I would like spend time fucking petting Dee Dee over and over again. I, I just, I, cause I wanted to do it. Cause it was, uh, the, the game lets you do it. And why the fuck wouldn't you? Cause he's like a boy, right? So, you know, like even Alan says it right there. He's like a boy. <laughs> That's awesome. From the old chat. I shot Dee Dee. It was a fucking accident. It was a. Sh I didn't mean to shoot Dee Dee. Dee Dee was my. Dee Dee's my boy. But nah, yeah, I shot him with a rocket launcher by accident. He didn't die though. He just got pissed off at me. And then we lost a little bit of respect. Or he lost respect for me. I still love the shit out of him, but I, he lost respect for me. <clears throat> I don't know what, what else to say, to be honest. This is just a really fun experience. There's just so much to do. If I had one problem with this game, one thing I would say. Um, that I'm not the biggest fan of is the fact that it's just so long and there's so much to do. And I'm kind of more of a fan of shorter games um, with lots to do and lots of replay replayability. This game is lots of replay replayability, but you've also, um, you kind of, uh, are forced to progress the game and beat everything and then go back and replay those missions that you've already done. So that's kind of a bummer for me because I really, I'm not a big fan of like 50 hour long games. I like six, seven, eight hour long games. Those are, that's my shit. I like that stuff. And then games that you can come back to, you know, replayability. That's fun for me, personally speaking, which is why I like games like, Resident Evil 3, you know, Resident Evil 3 is a shorter Resident Evil game compared to Resident Evil 2 because there's only one campaign and the, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, you know, but it's preferable to someone like me. I like replayability in a shorter game, whereas some people like the 50 hour long campaigns and shit like that. That doesn't really do a lot for me. With this game, it's, it's fine because I'm a Metal Gear fan and I love this shit and I'd never played this game before, so I was just really excited to play a Metal Gear game that I'd never experienced before. So obviously you can tell I suck major ass at this game, but I, every time I got spotted, I, I still had a, I still had a fucking absolute blast. That's how I was with my horse in Red Dead Redemption. Just every time you had a chance, you just fucking pet the horse. <laughs> so sick, man. I love that shit. Oh, and the mother base, and you can fly back to mother base, beat the shit out of your own dudes. Look at that stuff. It's so sick. These are my homies, and I'm beating the shit out of them. This is like. Like, they're my comrades, you know, we're there for each other, we got each other's backs, but, uh, you know, I can still punch them in the face and throw them on the ground, and, and, and we're still cool, right? It's kind of like how I treat my chat room, you know? It's great. It's like, those guys are my chat. <laughs> it's like, I'm Venom Snake, and that's my chat room, I'm just beating the shit out of you guys, like, ah, I'm just kidding. It's like, ugh, th it's, boss, you're, you're, you're great, fuck you, dick. <laughs> so awesome i love that shit man it, it was fucking great man i love that shit <laughs> the gripe i have is the length it's just too long and the story could have been a little more um attended to they could have tended a little more to the story they didn't do that really at all uh it's all hidden behind cassette tapes that you don't have to sit through a cutscene. thank fuck you could literally drive your car to a destination or just around the vicinity of where you are in the mission and listen to the cassette tape and let the story reveal itself that way. And it, it really works, to be honest. I love it. Um, but it could have, this game could have used more cutscenes for sure. I can't believe I'm saying that on a Metal Gear game, but it, it could have. MGS5, The Phantom Pain, number three, well deserved of that place because it's almost a masterpiece. But not quite. Uh, we're going to move on to number two now. Let's do number two, which I'm pretty sure is obvious to everybody. You could make an argument for this being the greatest game ever made. To be honest, you could easily argue that this is the greatest game ever made. I mean, you could easily make an argument for this being number one, and I would not disagree. Because it's just, it's basically a perfect game. It's amazing. There's really nothing wrong with this. 
honestly, this is a perfect game. It is a masterpiece. There's nothing I could say about this game that's negative. I don't know what to say about this game that's negative. It does everything right. Story is perfect. Gameplay is perfect. Uh, execution is perfect. Boss fights are perfect. Characters, extremely memorable. Dialogue, super well acted, especially for 1998. This, you have to understand which era this game came out in. We were coming fresh off the heels of Resident Evil 1, dude. The voice acting in Resident Evil 1 is atrocious, legendarily atrocious, because, you know, voice acting was still such a fresh idea. There was no voice acting in fucking... And these game in in video games back back in those days, Metal Gear Solid w invented that shit. MGS One was acted like Oscar worthy performances by everyone, pretty much. A um, couple exceptions here and there. Meryl's voice actress isn't the greatest, but she's she does a serviceable serviceable job. Otacon's a little cheesy at times, but David Hayter knocks it out of the park as Snake. Liquid Snake's voice actor, I don't remember the fucking name of him right now, is. Unbelievable. Uh, I really love that British accent he brings to it. Uh, everything about this game is just... There's nothing nothing bad about it, man. It's, it's fucking phenomenal. Like I said, storyline, incredible. Gameplay, incredible. Uh, the the cutscenes, you know, they, they weren't... They just... They just stay... Like, they didn't overstay their welcome. The cutscenes were there. They did their job, and they fucking, and then they were gone before they got boring. It was perfect. They really, really nailed every little aspect about this game. The game has multiple endings. It has unlockables. There's replayability for this shit, and, and it's 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 a perfect length too. Um, for its time, it was one of the best things possible to achieve. I'd say, yeah, Kojima really, truly, 100% pushed this. Push the fran uh, push the PS1 to its limit with this game. Like the quality of this game in every single aspect is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um, Army Man and Tomb Raider, yeah, they're they're good games, but I mean, nothing even no, they don't even come close to the level of of perfection that this game is. And I'm not even a, a hardcore Metal Gear fan. I love Metal Gear, like I said, but it's not one of my favorite, favorite, favorite franchises. That goes to Tekken, Hitman, and Siphon Filter. But I still absolutely love this franchise, but I would never argue that this is not one of, if not the greatest game ever made. Uh, like, I'm not even speaking out of opinion right now. Just objectively, as a matter of fact, this may be the single greatest game ever made. Um, they could, there's an argument to be made for that, for sure. Uh, it's, it's just phenomenal from start to finish. Start to fucking finish. Like, the second you, you drop into the, the bottom of the base where you're, where you're coming up with the elevator, and then there's that fucking, you know, there's so many quotable lines, a surveillance camera? Like, fuck, dude, just right off the bat, you know? Like, it, it's, it's it's so fucking unforgettable, brother. You know shit like this. All that shit came from this fucking game, dude. All that shit, all the all the memorable stuff that we love and know about this franchise. You know, Metal Metal Gear. That came from this fucking game. You know. Oh my god, dude. It's so fuck. It's just perfect. This is just watching this old footage from my stream like a year and a bit ago now. Whose footsteps are these? Yeah. Whose footprints are these? Yeah, holy shit, dude. Oh my god, just everything, man. It was... It, it was so... It was perfect. The fucking snake, snake, snake! At the end of the fucking game over screen. Like, that came from this game. And they kept it... Every, this is... Everything started here. What I said before about Metal Gear 2... How Metal Gear 2 is basically this game, but uh, with older style graphics. It, it basically became Metal Gear Solid. Well, that's probably why this game is so perfect because that was like that game was a perfect blueprint and a perfect prototype to what they would eventually create with this game in 1998. And God, if the Shadow Moses environment isn't the isn't the coolest environment in gaming history, it's like Alaska. Everything's covered in snow. You're in this fucking 
uh, industrial facility with with warheads all over the fucking place. You're surrounded by these mercenaries. You can't be seen by these fucking people. You know, you got to deal with these crazy superpower having douchebags like Vulcan Raven and fucking uh, uh, Revolver Ocelot and and you know all these cool memorable memorable characters originated in this game. Ocelot originated in this game. You know, oh god. Psycho Mantis is easily one of the greatest boss fights in the history of video games. You can credit so many people's awe moments, like the, a moment of awe, to the Psycho Mantis boss fight. Just the cutscene before the boss fight happens, not even counting the boss fight, which is also legendary. Psycho Mantis' cutscene, how many people have quoted that shit over and over again? You know, like... He fucking reads your memory card. He makes your controller move with his fucking mind, quote unquote, by making the vibrations shit shake it. Uh, you know, like he, he, she, he could tell you how many times you've saved in the game or not. Like it's unbelievable, man. Like that, that was so incredibly innovative. And then when you go to fight him, you you, you get your ass kicked repeatedly over and over and over again. You know, and then you realize, oh, you got to plug the controller into the second port. Like, what the fuck? Who would, comes up with this shit, man? Kojima's a fucking genius, dude. At least for this game, he was. And the next one, which you probably already know what that one is. But uh, um, I was so confused when I was told MGS knew that I play that I was playing Sui Coded. Oh yeah, dude, and like Castlevania and shit. Oh my god, so you like to play Castlevania? Holy tits, man. I lost my shit. 98. Oh, my God. I lost my shit, dude. Oh, and there's the liquid reveal. Master Miller's dead the whole time. Crazy shit, dude. Unbelievably fucking innovative and interesting and unique. And just everything about this game is just phenomenal. It's flawless. Oh, uh, you know, uh, what, was, what was another thing? The... How do you contact Meryl in the game? Oh, it's on the back of the CD case. Back of the CD case? You have this disc on you in the game, and you think it's, like, something to do with that disc, and then you actually, like... You, you're you running around looking for this fucking codec code, only to find out that they have a screenshot of it literally on the back of the fucking actual game CD case. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Just all that crazy shit is so fucking amazing. Like, who thinks of shit like that? Oh, I forgot what the code... Oh, it's on the back of the CD case. Dude, like the literal CD case? Like, to call Meryl? It's on the back of the... Oh my god, I lost my shit. I lost my shit when I first figured that out. That was a nice a nice way of, of copy, uh, copy protection, too. Yeah, of the um, yeah. That way, you you if you didn't have access to a computer, obviously nobody did in '98, but uh, or hardly anybody did, anyways. I had a fucking e machines in like 2002, but that was the earliest I ever had a computer. Um, in '98, hardly anybody had computers, hardly anybody had internet, and so, but pirating was still you know up and coming at that point, and pirating was uh. You know, Kojima knew that was going to be a problem, so he 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 basically gave himself and his company some insurance by making it so you could not advance in the game unless you had internet, which wasn't a thing back then, or if you had the actual fucking game. It, unbelievable, you know. Same thing. Yeah, Spyro Three, cool copyright protection as well. That that game didn't allow you to fly if you were using a a, port, a pirated port of that game. You weren't allowed to fly in that game. Stuff like that. But you physically could not progress in the fucking game unless you own a physical copy of the game with the with the picture in the back. Like, it, it's so incredible. So you were just stuck. You're just like, oh, you have a copyrighted thing? Well, there you go. You're done after fucking 20 minutes, dude. It's like a dick. You know, that was unbelievable. They really fucking... He really knocked it out of the fucking park with that. Metal Gear Solid 1 is... Not my favorite in the franchise, obviously, by a, by a fraction of a hair. Like, I, I have nothing but love for this game. I always will have nothing but love for this game. I think it's incredible. I think it's one of the best games ever made. Um, it, there, you could argue that, it's one of, it, that it is the best game ever made, and nobody would dispute you. I wouldn't dispute you. Um, it's just... 
it's it's fucking amazing you know i i think this is like the benchmark of how to make a video game you know uh, almost more than the num- my number one pick this is like how do you make a video game correctly uh well just use mgs1 as a reference take notes fucking take notes game devs perfect fucking game uh yeah i don't know what else to say besides Anybody who has never played this game, not only is it the perfect place to start for the Metal Gear franchise, but uh, it, it's, 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 you're walking into a phenomenal experience. It's not just a game. It's, a, it's an experience. This is the first game in the franchise I would consider a true experience. Like it, it, it'll, it will change your life. This game will change your life. If you're a gamer, if you appreciate quality, this game will change your life. Period. That's just the way it is. Done. I don't have anything else to say. If you never play this game, play this fucking game. It's beyond perfect. But it's not my number one because my number one belongs to uh, another game that's obviously just a, a smidge better. Barely even a tiny little bit better than this one. Um, it is... I would, uh, yeah, I would even argue that this is the greatest game ever made. Um, there is a solid argument that I, that I am 100%, I, I stand by it. This game is the best game ever made. You know, it's phenomenal in every way. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Can you, uh, can you fucking, can anybody argue this shit? Can anybody fucking argue this shit? Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Everything about this game is perfect. There's nothing, there's some cheesy moments that add some charm to the game, and every game deserves a little bit extra charm, so all it, all it does is, you told me, or you told everyone, <laughs> well, I mean, come on, man, can anybody deny it? Can anyone deny it? This game is, again, like MGS1, they're both perfect, and you could argue that one is better than the other, but you either want, if someone said MGS1 is the best game in the franchise, they'd be correct. If someone said MGS3 is the best game in the franchise, they'd be correct. If someone said any other game is the best game in the franchise, they'd be incorrect. It's, it's, it's either one or three. That's it. Period. It's either, it's either one or three. MGS3 is um, the definition of a perfect game. Everything about this game is perfection. Perfection. I don't even know what to say besides that. What, what do you say besides that? There's really nothing to say. Uh, you, you feel for the characters. The gameplay is next level incredible. In, talk about innovating. It, innovating a, yet again. You have to kill animals to eat them to gain stamina to continue with the game, otherwise Snake passes out. Uh, the, the, it's, this is an incredible boss fight. The end is arguably the greatest boss fight in the history of video games. It's, this boss fight itself is one of the most innovative things about the game. Uh, you know, you're... <sighs> God, I, I honestly don't know what to say about this one. Really, it's just a perfect game. The characters are super lovable. Every single character. Yeah, the, the Cobra unit could have been fleshed out a bit more, but it really didn't need to be because you just... You care about them regardless because of the way the game kind of like pushes them on to you uh, from the boss's perspective because they were part of her unit. The end boss fight? Oh, my God. Level of detail is awesome, too. Uh, it, absolutely. The sound design... The, the the birds and the and the animals in the background everywhere you go you're just in a jungle the whole time so it, nothing looks the same every section of this game looks different because you're in a jungle and the jungle kind of evolves with the game you start off in like a swampy area and then you move forward into like a a, a desert type or a, a jungle type area then you're in the top of a mountain in like a desert area then you get into an industrial facility and and, and and then you get back into the jungle area back after that uh, at the very end of the game you end up fighting the boss in a big flower field like it's just be- look at this fucking cutscene this is beautiful this is like real life and this game came out in 2004 man 2004 games i was playing games like 
Sevenfield of the Omega Strain and, and, and Hitman Contracts. Those two games were the games that I spent that entire year playing. I didn't play this until 2005, 2006. And I regretted uh, not playing it because I wasn't a huge Metal Gear fan back then. I still go back every once in a while to listen to some of the hilarious Kodak combos, like the box or the Patriot combos. There are so many hidden Easter eggs, but I don't think anything really has ever been developed that even remotely touches the incredible detail and depth and everything that this game represents. This is the blueprint for how to make a good video game, period. Um, Metal Gear Solid 1 kind of had that as well. It, both of them, honestly. You're allowed to say one is better than the other. Uh, between the entire franchise, MGS3 and MGS1. It's, it's only between those two. You can't even argue that there is any game that even comes close to those two. Those two games are on a completely different level than uh, any of the other games in this whole franchise. No game even touches the quality of these ones, of MGS1 and 2. Or MGS1 and 3. Fuck 2. Two's trash. The reason I think this game is so amazing is because I'm one of the pickiest dudes I've ever fucking met when it comes to video games. Um, I'm quick to judge. I don't like very many games, period. I don't like very many franchises. I don't... Uh, I don't, I choose not to play a lot of games because I'm very, very narrow-minded. I'm very set in my ways. And I was reluctant to play this uh, back in 2006 or 2005 because I, I, it just wasn't my franchise. I loved Siphon Filler and Hitman and Tekken. And I really only played those. And then I gave this a shot. Uh, no, I've never played Tomb Raider. Um... I'm going to try that one, though, too. Cammy was streaming that. I saw her streaming it, and uh, it, it, it enticed me to try the franchise out. But uh, I, I got to say, of all the games, like this, this game pretty much changed my life because it opened my mind to more franchises. Because of this game, I decided to play Splinter Cell. And you know that became part of my uh, collection of games, my little... My little circle of games that I like to play. Splinter Cell, Metal Gear, Hitman, Siphon Filter, Tekken, uh, and now Resident Evil is part of that as well. But uh, this, if it wasn't for this game, I probably would have never played Splinter Cell, and I probably would have never played the rest of the games of this franchise, and I probably would have never played Resident Evil, and I probably would have never played other games because I wouldn't be... I didn't want to try other games except the, for the ones that I knew I loved already. So this game completely opened my eyes. To the fact that there are masterpieces out there that I've never even tried, and there's a whole other world of, of games out there. But no matter what, no matter how many masterpieces are out there, no matter how many people uh, are, uh, uh, um, how many masterpieces are out there, no matter how many how many people love you know, whatever games or whatever titles, you you will never be able to discredit the fact that Metal Gear Solid Three is objectively Easily one of the top five best games ever made on paper and in reality, just period. Metal Gear Solid 3 is, is, has got to be on everybody's top five list. It has to be. If you don't have room for Metal Gear Solid 3 on your top five best games of all times list, you need to make room for it because there is no way you should leave this game off that list. It's perfect. It's, it's a perfect game, and that's coming from one of the pickiest motherfuckers you've ever talked to when it comes to video games. And I think it's perfect. And it's not even my franchise. Metal Gear is absolutely not my franchise. But there's nothing negative about this game. So, except for, like, fucking idiot AIs, obviously. This is the best game ever made, in my, in my opinion. And MGS1 is up there with this as well. And that's really all I got to say. I think MGS3 is just phenomenal in every way. Just the things you can explore, uh, the hidden conversations in the, in the codec conversations, then Easter eggs all over the place, Easter eggs and cutscenes with holding the R1 button and shit like that. You can, you know, uh, you can unlock really cool mechanics like Infinite Ammo with the Chinese uh, or the Japanese writing on, on Snake's face and the fucking uh, stealth camouflage prototype. You can unlock that ship. Yeah, I don't know. That's all I really had to say about this franchise. 
that was my ranking list. Really appreciate you guys hanging out for this. That was a lot of fun doing this. Um, definitely only my opinion. Uh, hopefully it offended a few people so we can start some fucking cool dialogues. Because I love debates. And if you're offended and you're pissed off uh, and you hate me now, even better. Good shit. I'm, uh, I'm happy. Thanks again so much for hanging out.